Welcome to MEC 4418 Control Systems. My name is James Friend, and we're going to start today with an introduction followed by a steady state error and controller behavior. Um, let's go. Okay, well, first off about me. As I said, my name is James Friend. I'm in room 133 in building 31. Uh, phone number extension is uh, 53551, so that's uh, 9905 and then there's my email, jamesfriend at engineeringmonash.edu. All right, so we'll be using uh, WebCT, and all the info should go on there, including the recorded lectures. Okay, so you'll be able to see that on there. And I'm always available during the consultation times at the office. Other times they're possible, I'd be happy to see you. Um, but the nature of the way my job ends up being, I'd have to ask you to make an appointment, uh, probably via email. I mean, phone is fine too if you can catch me, but via email to see me to make sure that I'm there to meet you. Otherwise, I'm um, usually at the lab or uh, off meeting people or something like that, uh, nine times out of ten, I'm out of that office and uh, doing things I'd rather not be. Okay. So, what's this course about? Well. Hopefully by the end of this, these are the th sort of things that you're going to be able to, to figure out. Uh, you're going to learn how to model, analyze, and design controls for dynamic systems of one or more degrees of freedom. You should be able to mathematically model a, a dynamic system with one or more degrees of freedom, introduce a controller to assess the outputs of the system, and then modify the inputs to the system and thereby control the system to give the de desired behavior. And the idea is to understand and master classical control methods, including root locus techniques, frequency response analysis, and pole placement. And the important thing here is, since this is a fourth year course, then it's we're talking about mastering uh, the material so that uh, it's, it's well beyond the third year level. Furthermore, I hope you understand and mas master the fundamentals of, of modern con control theory. All right, including state space modeling, controllability, and observability. These terms are, come up all the time in that area. And hopefully that you uh, understand the difference between classical and modern control methods and their areas of applicability. There are times when the classical control methods is, is best, and there are times when the modern control methods are best. And uh, when you would use which is uh, part of the goals of, of this course. Finally, and maybe most importantly, um, you, since we're only in this course together for about uh, 22 hours worth of lectures, and then we see each other for about the same amount of time to actually work on problems, and then again, you have a similar amount of time to work in the computer lab and work in practicals, then there's a lot of stuff we just don't have time to talk about, like advanced control techniques, okay? Advanced control techniques, digital, adaptive, and optimal controls. There's a lot of things that are done in industry and, uh, in, and actually in research and control technologies that we just don't have time to talk about. And the hope is, is that once you've learned this material, you'll be able to take what you've learned and know enough that you can go back and learn about, uh, actually be intelligent enough to learn about this new material. Hopefully, uh, at the end of this, you'll have a thorough understanding of MATLAB if you don't already. You'll also get to learn about Simulink, which is uh, basically um, a box, a connect, a connect the dots form of MATLAB, and use it to model a dynamic system and then design a controller for it. Hopefully, you'll have an ability to carry out the modeling and design processes for a design dynamic system by hand. Um, even with all the nice computer technology, like with MATLAB and Simulink, blah, 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 then you need to still be able to confirm that it actually is telling you the truth. And there are some some examples in the course where MATLAB will lie to you and will show you where it happens and your hand calculations will help uh, verify that there's something wrong. And this is rather long-winded, but it is important. The ability to assess the characteristics of a given dynamic system through the application of a classical and modern control theory and either develop a control algorithm to force the system to behave as desired or recognize that such an algorithm is not possible and be able to articulate what is needed to permit the development of a suitable controller. Basically, the idea of that long-winded statement is, is that you can be a control systems engineer 
And then, of course, there's the old thing about improving your analysis skills, result interpretation, and communication skills. Uh, the last thing, the interpretation of the communication skills um, is important, and you'll find it's important later uh, in life anyway. And so we'll try to try to do the best we can to, to improve it for you here. Okay, the fine print. If you look in here, you notice that um, what we have is in the first column we have uh, the week, and I can see already a mistake. That's 12. Okay. Uh, that when we go through the weeks of the semester, and we have uh, different lectures. Notice that we have one week here. We have a holiday week. Um, the lecture time is 25 February, 3 March, blah, 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 and go on down to the 19th of May. And the practical associated with it is on these dates, right? And then each week we have an assignment as a consequence of having the practical in computer lab. Those assignments are due basically prior to the, fo the following week's practical. So when we have a practical on 28th February, the assignment from that is due on the 6th of March. And then we have a practical on 6th of March that's due, and the, the assignment from there is due the following week. I know some people don't like the week-to-week -week assignment setup, but it does keep you up with the material, and hopefully, you know, you don't have to cram it all in at the end. All right. It would, it is, there is a chance that it could change around based on uh, whether I have to be away or something, and how how well you're doing in the in the course as a whole. Um, I will move change the course around depending on how well uh, you're making progress, and uh, I'll let you know ahead of time. All right, but otherwise you can kind of rely on this. There is a terminal examination. One thing I want to notice, note to you is, is that it's been changed from last year and actually previous years. Um, it's three hours now um, because this unit is actually you know, a six credit point course, so we need to have a three hour unit, a three hour exam for it, and uh, it's finally been changed. Uh, that's 75% of the course. The assignments is 25%, uh, comprise 25% of the uh, of the unit. What you'll note, I'll write it here on the on the screen, is what you'll note for the assignments, each assignment is worth, is usually worth two marks. Okay. Um, done well, then you get two out of two marks. If it's mediocre, then one out of two. If you've done it poorly, and this has to be pretty poor to get this, it's zero out of two. And it is at the marker's discretion to give half marks. So sometimes you'll see, sometimes You'll see like things like 0 0.5 out of 2 or 1.5 out of 2. And even the marker sometimes can give 2.5 out of 2 with an extra 0.5 for uh, especially good uh, result. Okay. Um, as well, I do give bonus marks in the assignments for mistakes that are found. in the lectures. Okay, so for example you can get uh, uh, usually one mark for every uh, mistake that is uh, present in the lecture. There are mistakes purposely placed in the lecture just to see if you're uh, awake and uh, so watch out for those and if you let me know uh, by email where you found it and so forth then I'll give you an extra bonus mark. I do expect you to attend the tutorials in computer labs and, of course, the lectures as well. Um, the, since the, the actual lectures themselves are recorded, um, what we'll do in the lecture time is uh, uh, work on uh, some of the tutorials and computer uh, lab problems. And uh, so this course is a bit different than, than probably what you're used to in the past. Um, but the hope is, is that actually you benefit from that experience. Um, the lectures. Well, they're 8 to 10 a.m. Monday weekly in room E532, according to what I've been told so far. Um, this time, I'm trying to get this time changed by the, 
I'm trying to get this time changed. By the time you watch this, it may well be at a more reasonable time. In computer lab is 4 to 6 p.m. Thursday, G18 and 19 together in building 60. Practical is uh, actually uh, at a similar time, 4 to 6 p.m. On Thursday, room foot 157, building 37. All right. And the idea is, uh, well, I'm sorry, my consultation is 12 noon to 1 p.m. on Monday and 2 to 4 p.m. on Thursday. And the computer lab and practical are scheduled at the same time, all right? And there will be two groups for uh, tutorials in computer labs, given the size of the course. So group one goes to the practical for the first hour, then to the lab for the second hour, okay? And, and then group two goes to the lab for the first hour, then to practical for the second hour. And if you're wondering if you're in group one or group two, uh, we'll actually decide that uh, when we first meet on uh, in the first for the first lecture okay um, assignments will give them practical and computer labs and they're due on a weekly schedule as I mentioned before uh, by the beginning of the following week's due um, you do have to use the mandatory, mandatory cover sheet for each assignment and put the computer lab and practical work uh, as a part of the assignment all together and and uh, I have been told that to say this so you know Please do me a favor and just let's let's do it. I don't know why, but anyway. Um, there's no late uh, homework accepted. If you miss the due date, then I'm sorry, it's just done. The reason is because homework is put up. Uh, homework solutions are put up on uh, on Blackboard, and the idea is that that look, if you hand in the homework on time, then you can compare your what you what you did with what I did, and then see whether you think whether you believe what I've done. Okay. Please don't hand stuff into my mailbox. Because if you do, um, and it's happened in the past, it may get caught up in the uh, the important mail from the department, administration, and so forth, and I may not see it for weeks. Um, what happens is is that if you hand it in as a tutorial, then it goes straight to the to the markers, and and everything is all all fine. But if you hand it into the mailbox, God only knows what will happen to it. Might be wondering about a text. Um, Strictly speaking, there is no text for this course. The lecture notes that you're watching right now and uh, the PDF versions of these uh, represent the material that you need to know. I feel that uh, you know, the texts are already ridicu ridiculously expensive and a lot of them have mistakes. Um, every text I've used, I've found mistakes in them and I don't think it's helpful to you. I know when I was a student, I was confused by things that some of the books said and years later, after when I actually when I taught the same courses, I discovered well the reason I was confused is because they were wrong. So we're not going to do that to you. We're actually going to have uh, lecture notes like this. If you like a text, the Nice text that uh, the bookstore has over there is a good one. You can use it and and we we'll actually follow it fairly closely. You can also check the syllabus or the uh, you know the course outline on this course um, uh, for additional learning and additional texts. There's others like the Elgato text is pretty good and for those of you in aerospace uh, my undergraduate degree was in aerospace and um, I still have a uh, fair interest in aerospace engineering so there's a lot of good texts in there for aerospace uh, uh, ideas especially Friedland is really good. Okay. The terminal examination is based solely on the assignments and lectures. If you don't have the book, you can just use the assignments and the solutions uh, to the assignments and uh, the lecture material. I try to avoid uh, having dirty tricks, unlike some of the other lectures. Um, occasionally I screw up, and it might look like a dirty trick. Sorry, it's just the stupidity of your lecture. Okay, MATLAB. Hopefully you know how to use MATLAB from the previous course, uh, meaning the third year unit. Um, and learned everything there is to know all about MATLAB and programming it and so forth. I don't fully expect you to do that and be able to have that knowledge. We do kind of start from a simple, uh, a simple start and with, with it. Um, there are good, some good tutorials for the software online and we do have um, some help files up on the, uh, on the, uh, the Blackboard MUSO site. And you can actually go to the MathWorks, the company that sells MATLAB, and uh, get some help there as well. Um, you can try Google search. There's a lot of sort of little tutorials are here and there around if you have any troubles with it. It's not a difficult program to learn, okay? And um, you can use MATLAB to check your assignments in a lot of cases, but don't give me uh, MATLAB code as solutions for the practicals written problems because you can't use MATLAB in examination. It doesn't really count for the practicals either. The practicals um, 
uh, are really just simply practice for you for uh, getting ready for the exam at the end of the unit. Simulink, um, if you've not used it before, is basically an add-on to MATLAB and it looks as, as shown um, below here. And the idea is that um, you know you can connect these little boxes together, see have an integrator and a sine wave, and then you can show what's going on. And in between here, you can set up yourself a, a little uh, block diagram with feedback and and whatever, and uh, it can be exceptionally complicated. It's just a block diagram or a representation um, that feeds MATLAB uh, code. There is tutorial. There's a tutorial for this on WebCT, the, 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 our website for this uh, course, and then there are several online via Google that you can use as well. Okay, well, with that in mind, you might be wondering um, what it is about control systems and when this is all uh, got started. I thought I'd give a little historical perspective to you to kind of give you an idea. Uh, the very first example of a control system was uh, by the guy by uh, uh, by a guy by the name of Cornelius Drebbel, uh, an egg incubator of all things, in 1624. Uh, after that, um, a little over 100 years later, um, James Watt and his flyball governor, um, kind of a, a dangerous sounding term, um, was the next representation of control systems, uh, control system. And then soon after that, only 140 years later, uh, actually Maxwell studied uh, the stability of the fly mall governor system and the interesting thing of it is is that uh, when Watt originally did it in 1728 they didn't use oil in this this mechanism that was a control system and when people started developing oil as lubricants for the fly ball governor they found that they became unstable um, kind of a peculiar problem that actually caused the destruction of a lot of uh, uh, steam uh, steam locomotives at any rate after that, things really got a rolling. Uh, stability criterion by Ruth, you know, the thing you studied in third year. That's so much fun, running a little table out. Well, it's been around for 130 some odd years. Uh, Nonlinear stability um, by Lyapunov. Um, we'll probably talk about that a little bit this semester. That was from 1890 um, by a Russian guy. Uh, gyroscope and autopilot uh, to permit people to fly into clouds and, and uh, actually fly out of clouds in one piece. Um, were by a Sperry, so uh, instrument flight rule um, equipment uh, was in 1920. The feedback electronic amplifier, so you have the feedback uh, circuits and so forth by Black in 1927. Nyquist stability criterion is quite a bit younger than the Ruth stability criterion, um, and probably when you look at Nyquist stability criterion, you can you can probably understand why because it's considerably more complicated. Uh, frequency response methods, Bode plots, and all of that. Well, Bode himself came up with it, and after that, all students like yourself ended up having to learn it. So if you were if you were born in 1937, then you wouldn't have had to study it. Too bad for you, and me as well. PID tuning, a Ziegler-Nichols tuning, it's called, uh, of uh, proportional integrator differential uh, controllers, um, was developed in 1942. Uh, there are a lot of de there were a lot of developments during World War II, as there always is during a war. Uh, root locus uh, methods um, by Evans in 1948. Optimal control um, based on the maximum principle by Pontragian uh, was in 1956 during a space race. And uh, Kalman filtering and inertial navigation um, by Kalman and, and Draper of Draper Labs of MIT, um, where he estimates states based on um, imperfect information from from sensors uh, was developed in 1960. This is entirely due to the space program and uh, the idea is that if you have like star trackers and uh, horizon sensors and so forth, they give you information uh, based on, you know, they give you information on your, your orientation and where you're located, but it's not perfect and so you have to synthesize all that information together to get a, to interpret where you are and how you're oriented. Um, you can do that with common filtering. All right, microprocessors, of course, we all know about that, but basically they did from 1969, and uh, that's really where things took off. And, of course, there's mountains of things uh, in control system theory um, and applications ever since then. Cornelius Drebbel, first guy uh, to ever do this. He dates from 1572 to, to 1633. He was the inventor of the thermometer, the chimney, and even the first submarine. But perhaps he's best known 
for his uh, invention of the perpetual motion machine. Yeah, he was a quack. And congratulations, the, the, the topics you've been studying and you're taking an elective, so presumably you want to really work in this area. Uh, this whole theory was really first uh, propagated by a quack. Um, there's the, the guy at left, you know, the classic um, uh, hand drawing, and there's his perpetual motion machine. Really didn't, didn't work, unfortunately. Uh, otherwise, we probably wouldn't be in with all the energy problems and so forth we have now. Anyway, um, the, with regard to controls, it's an egg incubator with control system. This is actually the drawing, and of course it makes perfect sense. Um, you know, even though you, I'm sure you understand what this means, um, we have another little figure over here of, of uh, a different representation of it. We have fire uh, heating up water, and we have a little uh, alcohol and mercury combination here in, uh, in a, an arm that reaches underneath into this water, and you place these eggs in here. Uh, the idea is, is that all right, if the, the alcohol gets heated up, it displaces the mercury, pushing this piston upwards, and it, uh, it closes the damper, it blocks the flue gases, and cools down the fire. On the other hand, if the alcohol cools off, it, it, um, it actually pulls the mercury back into this tube um, due to the fact of the, if thermal expansion and ther thermal contraction. Then this actually pulls the damper open and heats up the fire. It's just that simple. Okay, well, it was invented in the 1600s. Since that time, though, things have moved along quite a bit. You find control systems um, um, everywhere nowadays, uh, from the simple to the complicated. This is actually a, a panel on an aircraft. Um, it's a DME and ADF GPS system and with an autopilot. Uh, what it actually does is it lets uh, a pilot uh, uh, select uh, some marker beacons and uh, navigate from one beacon to another, and the beacons are actually just little towers on the ground that transmit uh, beeping signals. And the automatic direction finder, what this actually does is, is it doesn't just, this particular panel lets you select uh, beacons on the ground that don't just pr provide information um, that, you know, that beeps saying that I am here. It also gives you direction information. And of course, in the GPS, everybody knows what GPS is. So this is uh, for avionics. There's also other areas where, believe it or not, computer uh, control analysis can show up in the most unlikely of areas. This is a, a block diagram and root locus plot okay, to, to talk about the instability of uh, a mail server. So when you're sending email, there's actually people that have sat around and thought about, well, you know, suppose we have uh, um, like Monash University and it uses Lotus Notes, God help us. But suppose that you use Lotus Notes, and we have a computer that actually um, feeds Lotus Notes uh, certain email messages. And then uh, these are the emails coming in, those are the emails going out. How well does the computer cope with the delivery of emails? Well, the root locus would tell us that it doesn't do it very well. Completely different than what you might be thinking control systems might, um, would be used for. Bioengineering medicine? Well, this is actually. Um, sort of uh, like MATLAB Simulink, a little bit nicer model and specific for biology, but this is actually a model of, uh, of a human cell. Uh, the MPF regula regulation, the SPF regulation, this is actually communication between um, uh, across the membrane, um, communication within the cell itself, mitochondria, and so forth. And these are all, all, it's all a control system modeling the behavior of a human cell. Sociology? Hmm, well, this is actually from a paper, Weakness of Strong Ties to Collective Action Failure in a Self-Organizing Social Network. Nothing like having an academic describe how people develop into cliques. This is a, uh, uh, this is a group of people. The, the green dots um, like each other and the blue dots don't like each other. And uh, the, the strength of the lines actually refers to how much they hate each other or don't like each other control systems to talk about high school clicks. Unbelievable. Economics. This is actually, believe it or not, uh, this is the, um, a diagram in the control system, a, a block diagram representing a control system to describe how, how, what the chances are of you getting a job. Believe it or not, you have 
uh, mastery, financial strain, depressive symptoms, depressive symptoms, depressive symptoms, financial strain, blah, 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 re-employment, what the chances are uh, for each of these paths to be followed for you to actually obtain a job. You can actually develop a control system to ensure that you uh, would get a job uh, based on probabilities and so forth. So to summarize the introduction, use Blackboard to see what's going on with the course or WebCT MUSO, whatever the heck they happen to be calling it nowadays and use the lecture notes and assignments to prepare for the exam. Control systems design is almost 400 years old, but I would say that a lot of what has uh, been developed is really less than 10 years old, mainly due to computer technology. And control systems aren't just robotics anymore, so if that's what you're interested in, that's great, but believe it or not, you can use it for an incredible variety of things. All right, with that, I'm going to stop, and uh, thanks for listening.